Imagine a world where Lionel Messi has two World Cups and a three Copa America title. It well have been a possibility if I right here. Higuain's come a long way. It's a brilliant run. It's off the bar. The goal. The cup. And that's right. In three consecutive major international finals, Gonzalo Higuain had the opportunity to win it all for his country, but went completely ghost in the most crucial moments and situations where any other time in his career would have almost certainly been a goal. But watching these clips without really knowing him, you might think he was a very poor striker. But there was a time where Gonzalo Higuain was genuinely viewed as one of the most quality strikers in the world. In fact, for most of his career, he would be an absolutely lethal goal scorer. There was even a time where he would outscore Cristiano Ronaldo in La Liga, and he even holds the record for most goals scored in a single Serie A season. But that being said, Higuain probably has one of the most polarizing careers in recent memory, being one of the most slandered and disliked strikers in both the clubs he's played for and his international squad in Argentina. Because I tell you right now, it goes much deeper than just ghosting in the biggest stages of international football. In just a very brief amount of time, going from being one of the most promising number nines in the world to becoming an absolute joke, getting hated and memed for his decision making, weight gain, and so much more, that I honestly just started to feel a little bad for the guy. And you would have never guessed it seeing just how brilliant and on the rise he started off his career. There's a reason why in his early 20s, Gonzalo Higuain was once seen as the hope of Real Madrid next in line to be one of their longtime stars. Heck, they had to find the youngster playing all the way in Argentina for River Plate. To give some context, this is when Real Madrid still had names like Raul and Ruud van Nistelrooy that were still goal-scoring machines for the club, but they needed a younger investment that showed incredible promise and talent. And the 20-year-old Higuain was the perfect match. He was a baller with all-around good height, speed, and strength. Was actually known for his ability to finish around the box. And the young Higuain was even more promising than anyone in Madrid, both fans and management could have ever anticipated. Because just in his second year with the club, the 21-year-old would already be Real Madrid's top goal scorer for the season scoring 22 goals and providing 12 assists in 34 matches. That's right, the 21-year-old striker provided 34 goal contributions in 34 matches for one of the most pressure-filled clubs to play for in the world. And back then, you might have looked at it and thought that certainly, Higuain was the future of Real Madrid. However, the club would seemingly show otherwise, as they would go on to sign names like Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, and Ricardo Kaká, players that would all significantly reduce the impact and playing time of the young Higuain. Even over 10 years later, Higuain looks back at the Real Madrid chapter of his career and still asks the same question he once asked himself back then. How many more goals do I have to score? And you really have to show some sympathy with the guy, because what he was doing back then is not that much different from what Jude Bellingham is doing in Real Madrid today. I mean, both guys were practically the same age, and both leading the club in goal scored. And now, Bellingham is getting all the love and praise in the world, as he should. However, back then, for Gonzalo Higuain, what he was doing, at least to the Real Madrid board and management, as impressive as it was, simply wasn't enough. Even if the very next season, he would go on to once again lead Real Madrid in La Liga goal scored, with 27 goals and 7 assists, a total of 34 goal contributions in 32 matches, even outscored Cristiano Ronaldo. For some reason, still, it wasn't enough for the 22-year-old to be fully accepted as a generational piece for the club. Despite even continuously outscoring Karim Benzema to the Real Madrid management, especially Papa Florentino Perez, he still couldn't seem to find any favor. It really makes no sense that a striker as consistent and promising as Higuain didn't get more love. And if you were in his shoes, you could imagine just how frustrating that might have been, with a feeling like you were never really enough, or at the very least, didn't get any recognition for how you've been playing. And maybe the only reasonable explanation for this is that Papa Perez simply doesn't like Argentinian people. I mean, what else could it have been? At least, according to Higuain's father, that's exactly what it was. I mean, Fernando Redondo, Cambiasso, Solari, Gago, and even Angel Di Maria, all Argentinians would leave the club abruptly. But if we're being honest, Higuain was really done dirty by Real Madrid. And as much as he wanted to shine with the club and be their go-to striker, it just wasn't gonna happen. So Higuain would do the only rational thing there was left to do and leave the club. And thus, he would find himself in Napoli, a club that would actually accept him 
him, love him, and let him thrive. Because in Napoli, Higuain would play the best football in his entire career. This was the club that really got the best out of his skills, building around him and really letting Higuain show his true potential as their main star. And we're talking about Napoli here. Sure, they were Italian champions just last 2022-23 season. But back when Higuain was there, the last time they had won the Serie A title was back in 1990, which was also the last time an Argentinian was the star of the club, Diego Maradona. And Higuain would get off to an incredible start. In just his first season in a new league, he would have 36 goal contributions in 46 matches, also helping his club win the Copa Italia. Things were looking incredibly good for Higuain. He was in an incredible environment with fans that loved him and a management that gave him the respect and recognition he wanted and deserved. However, things would start to tragically go downhill from this point on, as in the 2014 World Cup, Argentina would battle it out all the way to the final against an incredibly tough Germany. And Higuain had easily the best opportunity for Argentina to win it all. This goal, however, was offsides. But those nerves might have gone to him, because he would once again have an even better chance until he did this. Higuain's come a long way, it's a brilliant run! It's off the bar. And of course, Germany would win the match 1-0, with millions directly blaming Gonzalo Higuain for Argentina not lifting the World Cup in 2014. He had so much backlash that it absolutely destroyed his confidence, especially when playing for his country genuinely making him consider retiring from international duty at only 26 years old. His only saving grace was his time at Napoli. At least there, the fans didn't blame him. They did the complete opposite and show him nothing but love and support. And it showed, as he would score even more goals for the club, with a total of 40 goal contributions in 50 matches, also helping Napoli lift the Italian Super Cup, playing in wonderful form. That was, until he got back for international duty with Argentina in the 2015 Copa America. Because here Argentina was, once again, in another major international final, just one year after the World Cup's second place finish. But what Higuain would do in the 2015 Copa America final versus Chile just made things a whole lot worse. Because he had the chance to win it all in the last 10 seconds of the match. Yes, I know Levetzi's pass was terrible, but Higuain still did have a decent chance to score. But when the match would go on to penalties, it would be Higuain to do this. Just kidding, he did this. Of course, Argentina supporters were absolutely furious with Higuain. Instead of blaming Lavezzi for the horrible pass, and the guy would receive even more hate and slander, only further destroying his confidence and growing the narrative that Higuain was not a big game player. But again, in Napoli, that still didn't matter. They never once showed their backs towards Higuain, only further continuing to give him love and support, helping heal any emotional or mental damage he suffered from those back-to-back -back major international final blunders. Because in the 2015-16 season, Higuain would go on to have the best performance of his entire career, going on to have an incredible 41 goal contributions in 42 matches, equaling the record for the most goals ever scored in a single single Serie A season with 36. Higuain was truly a star in Napoli, with the fans and management's love and support being at an all-time high. It was a season where Higuain was so incredible, it almost made you forget about those huge blunders he had for Argentina. Almost. Because in the 2016 Special Copa America held to commemorate 100 years of the tournament, Argentina would once again make it all the way to the final, with Higuain even being the third highest scorer of the tournament. And maybe it was finally time that they actually did it, is what you would have thought. Because once again, Higuain would have the chance to win it all, but did this. Higuain might be in here for Argentina, Gonzalo Higuain! Just wide. This was the third consecutive major international final that Higuain had absolutely bottled, and in my opinion, was the worst. And if it wasn't already, by now it was official. Argentina and Messi fans worldwide absolutely hated this man. The slander and hate on Higuain was at an all-time high, but that hate didn't top just quite yet. Because just a month later, it would absolutely moon 
as Higuain would leave the club that actually loved and supported him, only to go and play for one of their biggest North Italian rivals, Juventus. And to the Napoli fans, that was an absolute stab in the back and a spit on the face. The reason he did this was simply because he wanted to win some serious silverware. Sure, the Coppa Italia and Italian Super Cup are neat, but it's definitely not as great as winning the Serie A or Champions League title. Because remember when he left Real Madrid? What did they do? They immediately won a Champions League title. And Higuain himself was so close to winning three major international titles, but just couldn't seem to win. Higuain left Napoli to try to achieve some sort of footballing glory that he failed to receive with his Real Madrid and Argentina shortcomings. And perhaps deep down, he always wanted to prove the doubters wrong. But Higuain was now hated by the only supporters that genuinely had his back. Hell, even former Napoli and fellow Argentinian legend Diego Maradona was furious when he found out about Higuain's decision and publicly criticized him. Because if Maradona didn't already hate him for messing up so badly with Argentina, the man definitely hated him for betraying and disrespecting his former club. The hate on Higuain had finally reached the absolute peak, and it definitely left a mark. As when he showed up in Turin, he looked very noticeably different, gaining a significant amount of weight and overall looking a lot less fit, even losing hair and seemingly aging years just over the summer. And I personally believe that it's highly likely the amount of slander he received not only from Copa America, but also from his transfer to Juve just really took a toll on him emotionally and mentally. It wouldn't surprise me if the man had genuinely felt depressed. Because in that situation, who wouldn't? And deep down, I'm sure Higuain knows it. He's even openly apologized to the fans because he knows that they were the ones that really loved him and gave him their undivided support. But still, was it really worth it? Sure, he would finally win the Serie A title, but at what cost, really? His past would still continue to haunt him. Even in his first season with Juve, they would make it all the way to the Champions League final, the fourth major final in his career. And still, he would lose, getting absolutely demolished 4-1 to one by no other than his former club, Real Madrid. And all this time, Napoli fans continued to troll Higuain, never letting him forget about his betrayal. Because even after winning three Serie A titles and two Copa Italias with Juventus, it was Napoli that would really have the last laugh. As in the 2019-2020 Copa Italia final, Higuain could do nothing but watch as his former club would beat his team 4-2 in penalty shootouts. Sure, slowly after leaving Napoli, Higuain was still scoring a decent amount of goals, but it was only for a couple of seasons. As you could see, physically, especially with the weight gain, the man was really letting himself go. So much so that in just four years, he'd find himself in the MLS for Inter Miami looking almost unrecognizable. At the end of the day, Higuain had a pretty decent career and trophy case, but I personally don't think that any athlete should be receiving so much hate just for a simple mistake. As for me, the only one big mistake that he made was really in the 2016 Copa America final. But for the way that he betrayed the club that really had his back through all those tough times with Argentina, it does make you wonder, was the sacrifice to his legacy and mental and emotional health really worth the trophies?